Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Truth, Lies and Hair Ties. This is going to be a Halloween special. I hope lots of you have got things planned, even though I know it's a little bit more difficult this year, but I'm still going to use it as an excuse to dress up. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be moving away from orcas in captivity and it's going to be more of a, a mystery about what the orcas are doing in the wild. It's actually near Spain. Over the last two months, there's been over 30 different reports of orcas ramming into boats. Now, this could be either fishing boats or yachts or pretty much anyone going past in a boat. An orca has basically come and attacked. Now, this is very odd behaviour. It's not something that they usually do. Uh, there have been reports where they've played with the rudder. Sometimes they take hold of the rudder and they use it as a game because obviously the boat is taking them along, but it hasn't been quite as vicious as these reports. So I'm just going to go through a couple right now. Yeah, so I found these in the um, Guardian newspaper. On the northern coast of Spain, Halcon Yachts was taking a 36-foot boat to the UK when an orca rammed it at least 15 times. The boat lost steering and actually it had to be taken into port to assess all of the damage. On the 30th of August, a French flag vessel radioed the Coast Guard to say they were under attack by killer whales. Later that day, a Spanish naval yacht called Norfolk lost part of its rudder after an encounter with orcas. And on the 29th of July off Cape Trafalgar, Victoria Morris was on a delivery boat when nine orcas surrounded it and rammed it for over an hour. It actually spun the boat round 180 degrees basically disabling the engine and breaking the rudder. And apparently they were communicating with each other with really loud whistling sounds. I can imagine that being quite haunting, especially if you're like down in the middle of the actual boat. I think the echoing would be uh, quite creepy. Then the previous night, a couple on a 40 foot yacht was brought to a sudden halt, then spun several times and they felt the boat rise up a little bit. Another delivery boat called Reliant Yacht Management was stopped by four orcas. For 50 minutes they kept bumping the boat and also damaged the rudder. And I'll just show you a picture. This is all that was left from a rudder that was on a Scottish yacht. So obviously this is all really really strange behaviour. Now Dr Ruth Esteban who's been studying orcas for years and years, doesn't reckon that it's lots of different pods. They think it's just one. Um, and maybe there's about nine or ten of them. Something has clearly got them annoyed. So what is going on? What is the reason that all these boats are suddenly being attacked? And why this year? There's only 50 left around the Gibraltar area. Unfortunately, they're being damaged by all of the pollution, the plastic in the ocean, all of our rubbish. They're obviously ingesting it. It's not really a great place for these orcas to be because it's a really busy shipping route. They've got ferries, whale watching boats, cargo ships, transport vessels and merchant ships. And the worst thing for them is fishing. Now, before I get onto that, I'm going to show you what hairstyle I'm going to do today. So that will be two hair bands. That's going to hold your heavy ponytails up. Then lots of little elastic bands. As you can see, I've got different colours for Halloween, green and orange. You're also going to need a ribbon. I've got some hair chalk here a few other smaller pieces of ribbon and I managed to find these. They're quite cool jewels that you can stick into the hair. As you can see I've got my hair already in two high ponytails and if you can see there I've done a zigzag parting all the way down the back. So what we're going to do, we're going to create bubbles all the way down that will kind of look like little pumpkins. Okay, so you just want to go down 
a little bit here. I've got rubber bands because they seem to work a lot better and they stay in nicer. Some of the plastic ones tend to snap quite often. Might pull it up a little bit. And then you want to start pulling out the sides. This is going to create your bubble. Obviously you can make these as massive or as small as you want them to be. And then I'm just going to alternate the colours that I've got all the way down. Yes, yeah, so back onto fishing. There are several different ways of fishing. And actually around Gibraltar, they still use the ancient fishing method, which is called Almadrabra. <laughs> Let me just double check with that. Almadrabra. Almadrabra. Yeah, something similar like that anyway. So this is basically a complex system of trap nets which apparently are less harmful than drift nets. So I'll show you a picture here. As you can see, unfortunately, it didn't just catch fish. It caught a lot of other larger animals. And if you don't want to see an animal trapped in a net, I would look away now. So these are horrible ways of fishing. And actually, this method is now illegal, but apparently fishermen still try and get away with using them. So I reckon the main threat for orcas in that area is the fishing. Unfortunately, humans also like bluefin tuna and we've basically taken over their hunting ground. So if there's less food, that's not great for the orcas. And of course, if they've got young to feed, if there isn't anything that could cause major problems. So there's also fishing sport boats, I think is what they call them. And quite a few fishermen don't like these because they go really, really fast. Some of them can be seen going up to 10 knots, which is basically 18 kilometers per hour. And they drag along their nets. And a marine biologist called, I think, Jean Selling, he reckons they go after the orcas because the blue fin tuna is underneath the pods. So when they come through really fast on their boats and they're trailing the nets, sometimes the hooks can get caught and cut the dorsal fins of the orcas. So not very nice. And unfortunately, there's been quite a few accounts of whales being caught in nets. Obviously, lots of animals have been as well. Um, I'll tell you of one account. Now, in the end, luckily, this whale was able to get free itself, which is quite lucky because I don't think that happens very often. But a fisheries biologist called Paul Cottell or Cotterell said he's been involved in quite a few rescues over the years. He said depending on how much the animal struggles, the trap nets can really get tangled around their dorsal fins and it can go right round their tail several times, which basically means in the end the whale cannot move at all. And then the most difficult part is if they don't get rescued very soon, they can drown because of course at some point the whale does need to come up for air. So as I said before, killer whales are highly intelligent creatures. They have the second biggest brain of all ocean mammals and they can weigh up to 15 pounds and we're about to find out that they can be a little bit sneaky. So since 1999, two of the five pods around Gibraltar, just off Spain, learnt to take tuna from the drop lines, which basically meant when the fishermen brought up their nets, all that was left was the heads of tuna. <laughs> I can just imagine the look on the fisherman's face. Shock, I think, and probably annoyance. But I think the orcas were like, well, you're going to steal my food and now I'm going to take it back again. Why not? But this can be a risky business for the whales and some of them have sustained serious injuries. Some of the young orcas can get trapped in the hooks and one mother lost her baby and an entire flipper. So they had to be very careful. So, I mean, I'm not saying that all fishermen are awful, you know, and I'm sure some of them do actually need to 
feed their own family but it does seem quite a lot of them don't really care what other animals get trapped in their nets and what was really disturbing is apparently there's been so many records of fishermen actually throwing petrol cans into the water and some of them have these electric prods and they've seen them cutting the dorsal fins of orcas. So I'm not surprised that these killer whales perhaps are a little annoyed and I wonder if this one family or this one pod had quite a few accidents or incidents maybe they've lost a few calves due to nets and that's why they're you know um, fighting back and there was a, a whale researcher called es Esequel Kazala who's actually seen two orcas recently with really bad injuries you know he said one of them had a significant scar it was so deep you could see the white tissue not very nice and actually what was quite interesting is um, Victoria Morris who I think she was on the third boat that I mentioned at the beginning she thought she had also seen an orca who had a scar or who had been injured before so that's quite interesting and that could be a reason as to why they're annoyed so there's another reason and this might be really far-fetched and really strange but when I read it I thought what an interesting concept who knows it could be the reason so why is it happening this year you know this year in particular where everything is going a little bit strange and lots of things are happening well some people think we had a lockdown seven weeks the Gibraltar area was going to be very quiet obviously there would be far less fishing they wouldn't have the whale watching boats there wouldn't have been the merchant ships going past it would have been a lot quieter for the whales to hunt and then after seven weeks it got busy again and all these annoying ships and fishermen came back maybe that's what tipped them off Maybe that's when they said, no, <laughs> enough is enough. You know, you've now come back. You're ruining our hunting ground and, uh, and we're annoyed. It sort of reminds me of those cartoon movies where the animals, you know, get their own back. And uh, I don't know, I guess it wasn't something I thought that could happen in real life, but who knows? As I said, I mean, 30, 30 reports that's a hell of a lot just over a few months so we're actually going to talk a little bit about pollution because that could also be a reason as to why these orcas are getting irritated and annoyed um, because I'm sure you've heard of many accounts of animals having plastic in their stomach and all that sort of thing well there was one orca called Lulu and she was brought in she had died unfortunately and they obviously wanted to find out what the reason was and apparently when they tested her she had the highest content of toxic pollutions that they've ever found in an animal although the reason she actually died was because she was caught in a net but I think after that they also do sort of an autopsy to see if there's anything else that was wrong so this poor whale who died in 2016 not only was caught in the nets but was just full of all these horrid toxins which probably slowed her down a lot more and what was also interesting is they found out that she was never pregnant she never had a calf and she was the right age to be you know a mother and they reckon it could have been the toxins they made her infertile now if this is true that's not great for the population either is it if they can't have babies and I think gosh what sort of toxins would have made a whale infertile and that's a pretty big ocean that's a massive ocean you know to to have all of these poisons in 
from us. Yay, we're doing well, aren't we? Right, so here it was, the pollutants, they are called PCBs, which is polychlorinated biphenyl. And this stuff was found in, it was like coolant fluids, um, electrical apparatus, carbonless copy paper and heat transfer fluids. And it said an estimated 1.2 million tonnes of this stuff has been made globally. But they found out a lot of problems and a lot of issues with using this stuff. There was lots of accounts linked to cancer. So most of the places stopped using it in the 1980s. But unfortunately by that point, the damage was already done and it was still to be found in local rivers, landfills and dumps. And it's probably quite obvious how it made its way into the ocean. I found this quite interesting picture here actually. And um, yeah, it quite clearly tells you how easy it is for toxins and pollutants to get into the ocean and then to damage our wildlife. And of course, once it's in the water, all it takes is an animal to eat something that has PCBs in it and then a bigger animal to eat that animal and so on. We're not really doing very well with the whales in captivity, but it seems like we're also being able to damage them in the wild as well. So awesome work, eh? <laughs> so is this strange behaviour revenge? Are they finally deciding to fight back and they're saying enough is enough? It's a very strange year. Lots of things are happening and there are still more reports coming through. I reckon it is one pod. I reckon they've had a lot of stress. I think perhaps they've lost a couple of calves. You know, if if one of them saw their calf being drowned, you know, I think they would be very annoyed. But please leave comments down below what you think is making them stressed or annoyed or wanting to act out in this very odd behaviour. Because also some people are saying that they're not attacks, they're just playing with the boat. But I'll show you a few more photos of the damage that these orcas have caused by simply playing? Mm, I'm not sure. Considering no other reports have come in quite like this before, it's definitely something strange. Okay, so now we're just going to finish off this hairstyle. You don't have to use all of the things that I've got here, but I will definitely leave a link down below where I got these jewels from. They're specifically hair jewels, so hopefully they'll stay on. Can't even find where to open it. Oh no, there we go, there we go. So they're quite long lines. I have got some scissors here because I might actually need to cut them, but right, let's see. I'm gonna stick it on there. Try and put it right where my skin is. Lovely. Right, and then found this lovely orange ribbon in a secondhand shop. Okay, so we're going to tie this into a nice bow. I'm going to make sure it's the same. I'm going to wrap it around once and then I'm going to wrap it around one more time come to the top and then choose which side you want your bow to be on. I'm going to choose the left side just here. Just like that. And then I've got a few other smaller pieces of ribbon and I'm going to tie a few little bows. Okay so now I've put a few little black bows in. We're going to try with these special hair chalks. Now you do need a glass of water and um, it just makes it a little bit easier to get it on. So this hopefully will make it look a little bit more like a pumpkin. 
So I'm going to get a nice dark orange one. trouble is it does go all over your hands so if you have some gloves that will probably be better So I hope you enjoyed that slightly crazy hairstyle. Give it a go. I have to say it does look a little bit better on longer hair just because you can fit in a few more of the bubbles and then make it look like little mini pumpkins. You can always, if you find like little green ribbons, if you tie that on the top, it might look like the top of a pumpkin, uh, but I didn't have green, I only had black. Also, I showed you these are the hair chalks that I've got and they look just like that. I wouldn't actually recommend getting these. As I said, they go everywhere on your fingers unless you've got loads of gloves to use each time. I'm just using these up because obviously I don't want to throw them away and waste them. But I will put a link down to some that I think are a little bit easier to use and to put onto the hair. Okay, well, that's it for today. I hope you have an amazing Halloween with whatever you've got planned. Or you might just be sitting home watching movies like Nightmare Before Christmas, Practical Magic, Hocus Pocus. I know that's definitely what I'll be doing. Well, until next time, bye!